My name is George Flood, and the reason I'm up here today, I want to tell you right now, is because the organizer and founder of this event, Jim Harriman, had a little heart problem here about a week ago. And he's supposed to be in the hospital. So he talked to his doctor and let him go home. And then he talked to his wife and letting him come down here. And he's supposed to be upstairs in bed. I just saw him about three minutes ago wandering around the hallways, wondering what's going on. So if you happen to see a couple of guys in white coats looking for somebody, don't tell them. They're probably what he's probably being searched for right now by the hospital staff. But he had a bad, uh, a bad experience about a week ago. So he asked me to come down and introduce the, the program for him. I'm very pleased to do. I work for the Penco Insurance Company. How many people here are insured with Penco? No drinking or driving tonight, gentlemen, ladies. But uh, I want to have my retirement assured. The reason I'm here is primarily to introduce one of the great coaches of America. And, the reason, and one of the other reasons is because Penco is so proud to be associated with this clinic, which has been going on now for about 15 years. And our involvement with it simply is to come down and meet you folks once a year, some of the better insurers that we have and some of the better customers at Penco. But this year especially, it's a proud privilege of ours to be able to introduce the head coach of the University of Miami Hurricanes, a two-time national championship winner, and uh, a gentleman who was born and raised here in the Everett Snohomish area. He doesn't need any introduction from me. You all know him. He's the, one of the premier coaches in America, Coach Dennis Erickson, University of Miami. So, uh, so, can you hear me? All right. Okay. It's a pleasure to be here. Actually, it's a pleasure to be any place. You know, get out of Miami. I'll tell you what. We won two national championships, and, and then we played Arizona. And uh, they're still trying to hang my ass, so I get out of town occasionally. But uh, it's always nice to come back here because uh, I know so many people here. I speak at clinics all over the country, but it's always nice to come back, see some familiar faces, and, and uh, see people that... Uh, you know, I grew up with and, and, and came to the coaching ranks with, so it's, it's great to, to always come back. I came in last night, uh, it was a six hour flight. The Huskies are coming there next year to Miami and I'll guarantee you we're gonna have a hell of an advantage. It's a long flight. I just hope we give them wine, whiskey, whatever they want on the flight down there. And uh, it'll be interesting. That's gonna be a big game for, for all of us. Of course, they can't go to a bowl game now, so that's gonna be their bowl game. And uh, so it's going to be a hell of a contest, and uh, you know I got great respect for for the University of Washington. I'm so happy that Jim Lambright got the chance to be the head football coach. Uh, I grew up watching Jim play. My dad coached him, and we're from Everett, and it's just uh, you know great to see him have the opportunity. Of course, losing Don James in our profession to me was a killer, and you know it makes you wonder about what we're in and what we're doing. But to lose a guy like that because of how we lost him, you know, is really an unbelievable thing. But to have Jim involved and, and be the head coach is going to be a tremendous uh, thing for everybody in this state. And of course, Mike Price uh, backed me up in, in, in high school. Well, actually, he was a starter. I beat his ass out. <laughs> <laughs> and I recommended him when I went to Miami. But, uh, you know, Mike will be speaking here. I haven't had a chance to see him. Usually when him and I and Gilby get together, we swap a lot of lies. And, Usually the next day we can't remember what the hell we talked about, but uh, and Gilby's coming in and uh, he did a tremendous job at Cal, and, and uh, so I mean you're going to listen to some some great people talk about the about the game, and and uh, I'm going to talk to you about the same thing I've always talked about, and uh, what we do, and, and you know every time something happens in football or anything in life and that it's not very good, you evaluate you know what you do offensively, defensively, evaluate yourself as a coach, evaluate. Uh, your assistant coaches because that's that's where it starts. Uh, the easy thing to do is blame the players. You know, it's easy to say, well, that guy's not worth the shit and that guy's not worth the shit and that guy isn't very good. But when it, when it gets right down to it, you better evaluate what you're doing coaching-wise. And I'm not talking about X's and O's. I'm talking about philosophy, uh, off-season program, uh, playing with enthusiasm, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, we played Arizona. It was the ugliest thing I ever saw. I happened to have to be there. And, uh, I mean, they just flat kicked our ass. And I'll watch the film, the video now, it used to be film, and uh, I mean, there was no reason for that other than we did not play with the enthusiasm that we needed to play with and what we played at at the University of Miami for a long time. So 
Well, you better sit down and evaluate what the heck you're doing <coughs> as far as that part of it. The X's and O's, are the, whether you run the wing T, the I, one back, two backs, it doesn't make any difference. You've got to make sure they play their asses off. And, and uh, you know, that's one thing that we're looking at. Why did it happen? You know, I really don't know. But uh, I know one thing. <coughs> In Miami, their expectations are very high. When you go there, we won two national championships, and uh, they're all Jimmy's guys, Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy and I are very good friends. Him and I use the same hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy and I are really good friends. We, we really are. But when we won those championships, they were all Jimmy's guys. And when we were 11 and all, and we played Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, they were all Jimmy's guys. After we played Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, they were all my guys. <coughs> so you, you can't win. So you can't worry about the outside pressures, the outside things. You just got to worry about how you coach and what you got to do to make your football team a little bit better. But what I want to talk to you about is, is, is what we do, the one back stuff. And I still believe in it. You know, there are a lot of people. You know, one thing about Miami, they got two 24 hour talk shows, sports talk, talk shows for 24, hour, four, 24 hours. Hey, that's all they talk about. You know, my, one day is going to be, well, okay, it's Don Shula. Um, and I, I'll tell you what, he's the greatest coach that's ever lived, and those people are on his ass so bad. Then it was De Dennis Erickson. Day. That lasted for a week. <laughs> <laughs> my wife liked it so much, she listened to that thing for, you know, for a week. She said, about time you got your due, boy. They're cussing you out like I've always wanted to cuss your ass out. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I mean it's, un it's unbelievable. 24-hour talk shows. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. You think newspaper people are bad? Get those guys that have nothing else to do. I'm, you know, I'm driving to work at 10 in the morning. People are on a talk show. I mean, what do they do for a living? Obviously, they don't work. And the great thing about Miami, they do it in Spanish, German, whatever. You know, and I like it that way. That's, the restaurants I go to now are all Spanish because I don't understand what the hell they're cussing me out about, so it's a heck of a deal. So. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about the, uh, the one back and the things that we do with it. And, uh, uh, you know, there's some things that we've refined, some things that we have got to, to get better at. But the key to anything in football to me is running the football. The difference between us this last year and the year before was we could run the football. And I don't care if you're one back, two backs, three backs, it doesn't make any difference. You've got to block people up front. That's what it's all about. We did not block people up front like we needed to. But I still believe in it. I believe in the philosophy of it. Uh, when we first started, when, when I was at the University of Idaho, nobody else was doing it. Uh, you know, we'd run motion, do all that stuff, and, and uh, you know, people wouldn't adjust. We've got a lot of big plays. Well, what's happening now, like anything, you know, the defenses are seeing it all the time. You know, everybody in the NFL is in one back, uh, and people are just starting to defense it a little bit better and understanding what's going on with it, particularly the passing game aspect of it. So it's a lot harder to throw the football. But what you've got to be able to do is you've got to be able to run the football. Uh, one thing about the, the one back that I really like, doesn't make any difference, and I'll go over the formations in a second. You know, everybody's doing it. The thing I like about it, number one, is it spreads the defense. You can see what's going on. It spreads the defense. Regardless of what happens in the running game, it spreads people out. I mean, you can have this guy sitting in here. You can have him there. You can have him there. It doesn't make any difference. But what it does, regardless of what the front is, is it takes somebody out of run responsibility to play the pass. And, and when we first started, it was a mismatch. You know, that guy against that guy in the passing game. Well, people are playing five DBs, six DBs, all those different things. So it's not as much of a mismatch as it used to be. But what it does is it does bring somebody out to cover that guy, uh, and, and, it, and it opens up the running game. The other thing that I like about it is it get receivers out quick. You know, whether it's a quick passing game or whether it's drop back. The thing that you can do, whether you motion the guy, you know, or whether you're just sitting there, you can get four or five receivers out very quick. Obviously, you can get four out quick. You know, getting them from here compared to here makes a big difference. And so in your passing game, you can get four receivers out a, a heck of a lot quicker. The other thing that I really like about it is you can identify the blitz a lot better. And uh, 
Everybody's playing pressure defense. We're going to play the Huskies, you know, where they got eight up and they back out, or Arizona State, or, or, or whatever. But the thing that you can do against stuff like that, you can identify if they're going to blitz or not. The bottom line, whether it's this formation or trips or whatever, <clears throat> You know, if that guy's going to blitz, or if that guy's going to blitz, whatever, they've obviously got to get the free safety over there to cover it. And when you set the guy in the backfield, they can do a lot of disguising, do a lot of different things. You know, they can bring different guys from different places and you can't see it. So what we try to do is spread them out. So if that guy's going to come in and blitz, that free safety has to get over and you can deal with the blitz. Because dealing with the blitz is not easy. I don't care what you've got called up front or what, what protection you have. If they're going to blitz you, you better max up, try to get the ball deep, try to throw the slant, the quick out, or whatever. And if you can't see it coming, regardless of if, if those backs are in there, you've got problems. So what we try to do is spread them out so that we can identify the blitz. But the other thing in blitz is it's a lot easier to throw the hot. You know, you talk about the hot principle of the passing game. You know, and it can be your tight end or your or your tailback. But when you have two guys in there and they bring and, and they're going to blitz you, and the only guy that's hot is him. You know, they can snuggle up, bring that strong safety, and take that thing away. So, so in the one back with the tailback out here, if they're going to blitz you. We spend a lot of time, as far as a hot part of it is concerned. Right, so if they, if they bring anybody, for us, now that guy's hot, whether it's outside or inside. So the hot principle of the passing game is a lot easier to read and a lot easier to throw. Because if you try to throw it to the back, number one, he's got to find a way to get out. And if they're going to blitz and engage, you know, I'm going to take a backer and, and bring him. But if he releases, he's going to play him. It's a lot easier to see that because now you got him sitting out here and they can't blitz him the gate. So if they're going to bring him, he's got to get over. You can throw the ball hot to him flat or inside. And, and for us, it's been a real big thing, throwing the ball hot. Uh, you know, anymore in the passing game, to try to identify what's going on, you can see it. But, but if they're going to bring them all, you've got to deal with the, you've got to deal with the hot principle. And getting the back out or to the tight end's hard. You cannot snuggle up on this guy like you can a tight end. Different athlete. Even if you do, then you just run him down the football field and let it go. And, and, and you got a mismatch. So, you know, they've got to play, they've got to play it out, and they've got to play the hot principle, and it, it makes a heck of a difference. The other thing that I talked about earlier is opening up the running game. And I really believe that. And I still do, and I, and I always will. Obviously, at Arizona, it wasn't like we wanted it. You know, I made Rich Olson the offensive coordinator that day. I kind of let it go myself. Shit, I'm going to take it over from now on. But just kidding. But what it does, and let's say he's in there in the eye, you still got to block that guy. I mean, you can run the ISO, you can run the zone play, you can run a lot of that, but it doesn't make any difference. You know, that guy's got to block that guy. I mean, that's the bottom line. You've got to get that guy blocked. So it, what our theory is, is let's get that guy out there. Let's get him out there. We're going to block him with our tailback, but he also has to play pass. And uh, so we just move him out. We run the same thing, and I'm going to go over the running game real quickly. We're going to run the same things that you would out of the eye, or split backs, or anything. All we're saying is, now you be responsible for pass, and we're going to come off, and he's got to play pass, and we're going to block him. And it's a lot easier blocking him five yards out the line of scrimmage, you know, than taking a fullback, you know, and trying to block him. If, on ISO on the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, that's the whole theory of, of the one back as far as running game is concerned. The other thing I like about it 
is you can get in a, a bunch of different formations and do the same thing. It doesn't make any difference. Our formations basically, uh, our formation that we use in the middle of the football field or off a hash is doubles. You know, it's a balanced formation in the middle of the football field because you see balanced defenses. We call that doubles right. Everything we do tells where the tight end's going to be. And I think the key is the split of that gun as far as alignment is concerned. You can do what you want with your flanker. You can do what you want with your split in. But you're in one back for a reason, to get people spread out and to identify what they're doing. So if this split is tight, that guy can play games with you. So what we tell, what we tell our tailback is you split five yards outside of the tackle and, and two yards off the line of scrimmage and make sure you're at least five yards because we want him to either come out and cover us or to come inside, which tells us it's, that it's blitz or the strong safety's over there playing three deep zone or whatever. But we want to make sure that he is split so that he has to dictate what he's going to do. We want to dictate to the defense what they're going to do. The key to what we do in one back with the split and the reason for the split, if that guy's going to try to play in between and do some different things, the bottom line is throwing hot, throwing uncovered, I should say. Uncovered is a key. Throw uncovered. And I can remember over the years, you know, that guy would screw around, that guy would take an outside release, he'd take a step and throw the football to him. I mean, we didn't have to call. What we tell our quarterback and, and, our, and our tailback, whether it's doubles or trips, if you're uncovered, you do that with your helmet. The tailback. Hey, I'm uncovered, that guy's inside, I'm going to take an outside release, he can't play me. So we might have a running play called, he'll give him that, our quarterback take a step and throw the football to him. Nobody's going to be downfield, obviously, because it's throwing really quick. So we throw that thing uncovered, and you've got to do that. Because if you don't, you know, they can really screw with you here. I mean, they can do a lot of different things with that outside backer. So you've got to make up your mind, if you're, if you're going to do this, to throw uncovered to that tailback. You take one step, boom, ball's gone. Throw it firm. We tell him, you take an outside release under control and look for the football. Yeah, I mean, it's not a speed thing or anything like that. If I'm the tailback, that guy's inside, I give him that. I'm going to take an outside release away from, from his drop. But I'm going to be under control about like that, a little quicker than that. And that quarterback's going to take one step and throw it to me. Now they can say, well, we'll give you that. Well, you know, eventually you hit it and you hit it, and that guy's getting his ass chewed out by the coach. So pretty soon, he's going to move out and get a position where he can play that. <laughs> and uh, we've got to have him do that in, in this offense. Now, our running game is very simple. Very simple out of, uh, out of all the formations. So I talked to you about doubles. That's a middle of the field formation for the most part. You put it on a hash, what they're going to do to you is they'll play cover three in the field. And now you're forced to run back into the boundary. So it's a middle of the field formation for us. The other formation that we use a lot that, that is a hash mark uh, formation is what we call trips. Wide side of the football field. It's the same principle there with your tailback. Believe me, man, that is a key. And I've done this for a lot of years, and I see that more often now than I've ever seen it. Because they're going to screw around with you, bring them in and out, get them split. What we tell them in this formation is you're going to make sure that you're split, like I said, five yards. He's going to split the difference between him and him. And what we tell our split in is that you are outside of the numbers, which is, uh, you know, whatever. I think it's nine or 10 yards from the sideline. But make sure you split them out. The worst thing you can do is, is uh, be too tight with your splits. Split out so that they have to tell you what's going on. But trips is a big formation for us. The other thing that, uh, that we're in is tray, which is another form of trips. It's 
Same formation as trips, except you open the, the back side up. And it also is a hash mark formation. You got your tight end sitting there. What we tell this guy, who's our tailback, is you're going to split the difference between him and the flanker. We tell the flanker again, you are going to split outside of the numbers. And now, now the, the tailback is going to split in the middle. Now, obviously, things change according to routes, strength of arm, all those things as far as that guy is concerned. In our offense, this is our best football player. He is our best football player. And, and in high school, you take your best athlete, I don't care who he is, you put him there, that tailback, whether it's in trade, trips, or doubles, and you always have a mismatch. Take your best player and, and, and put him there. The other formation that we, that we run quite a bit is what we call twins. Which is two tights, two wides. And uh, you can do what you want. Everything you do is the same. It's a, it, it is a short yardage formation for us. It's also a middle of the football field formation for us. But it's two tights, two wides. The other thing you can do you can get the trips, put another wide receiver, uh, or flex your tight end or whatever. We just call it trips open. The other thing you can do is you can motion any of those two guys anytime you want. You can go from doubles to trips, trips to doubles. Uh, do all those different things, which creates problems for the defense, yet still run everything that you're going to run. And that's why I like it. It's so simple. I mean, you can go, you can go doubles right, zoom. All zoom tells us, everybody uses different words, is that he is motioning doubles from trips. Or you can call jet, call the same thing. Now he motions there and the tailback still stays in. So, I mean, you can do whatever you want, formation-wise, and it's, and it's very, very simple. You run the same thing out of all those formations, which is really the key. Our running game is very simple. It hasn't changed. Uh, we refined it a little bit, uh, doing some different things up front. But... Uh, What we run is what we call inside zone. Inside zone, outside zone, counter, which everybody in the country runs. Counter strong and weak. We probably run a weak more than we do strong. And draw. Well, that's basically what, we're, what we've done for years. What we are going to do a little bit differently this year, as we last week we sat down and went through all our cutups on everything that we do running game wise. You know, people are playing a lot of eight man front screwing around with those backers. We have got to become a pretty good trap team now. You know, we've made the commitment to trap to the inside trap because when people are coming up the field and they're playing the zone play, you've got to be able to have something back inside. You know, whether we were stubborn or whatever. We just haven't done that, mainly because of teaching time. Now, how many things can you teach? And uh, we've decided this spring that we're going to spend a lot of time on, on the inside trap play, which all of you run, uh, regardless of the formation. But when you get people running, you've got to be able to come back inside and do some different things. Now, the inside zone is probably the play that we get the most yardage out of. But we run that second. Well, if we're going into a football game, we are going to run outside zone to start out with. And the difference between inside and outside zone is strictly one thing. The uh, aiming point of the back. And so our theory running-wise, regardless if it's doubles, trips, trade, twins, it doesn't make any difference, is we want to get backers running. Now, if they're playing a 50, which we're starting to see a heck of a lot more now. We want to start with outside zone because we want to get these guys 
going towards the sideline as opposed to up the football field. And, and the track of the back is a key because that's, you can talk about key and guards and all that stuff with your linebackers. But with those linebackers, key is a back and a track of the back. So on outside zone, the aiming point of our, of our back, we're going to the weak side, is two yards outside of the weak tackle. If we're going to the tight end side, it's right over the tight end. That's his aiming point. And, and all we tell him, he's, uh, he's lined up, and that varies too. Yeah, I can talk to you about alignment. We, he's seven yards deep for us. We got, his heels are at seven yards. We've screwed around with him five, we've got him six, we've got him, but we tell him seven yards. We tell him seven yards because now he's really an high tailback because he's gonna cut back and do a lot of different things. So we have his heels at seven yards. Uh, you know, if a guy's not quite as fast, you're moving up to six yards. You know, nothing's etched in granite. You do what you gotta do to get it done. And, and we'll move him up and back according to uh, to what kind of an athlete he is. <clears throat> but his aiming point, like I said, is the outside hip of the, of the, or over the tight end or two yards outside to the weak side. He's lined up, he's in a nine formation stance, balanced, and if he's running outside zone, his first step is boom, at that aiming point. He is going right now. You know, it reminds me of the outside beer, you know, from a <clears throat> standpoint of aiming point. And he just goes, he goes, boom, right now. Our quarterback has really got to become flat in order to get him the football. What happens a lot of times, you've got inside and outside zone, you talk about ball handling and all those things. You've got to make sure that that quarterback, when it's outside zone, that he doesn't go here. Because you'll never get him the football. If the guy's where he's supposed to go. He's got to come out, not flat, but whatever angle that is, to get him the football in a position where he can make a break off the tackle's block. Now, the whole key to it, outside zone, is that aiming point to get the backers to run. And we block it all the same. We zone block everything. So if it's a 50 defense, if it's a 50 defense, we used to take a big drop step. And I, I know you've heard Greg Smith talk, and, I mean, we, and, and the Bengals did it in Kansas City. We used to teach him, <coughs> you're going to take a big drop step. It's, it's boom, boom, you know, and getting blocked. We don't do that as much anymore. We take a little bit of a drop step to see what's happening. But we tell our tackle now, instead of doing that and getting himself turned, is that all he's going to do is kind of get parallel to the line of scrimmage and now go drive block again. Now, it's all zone principle. The guard's going to do the same thing because they got to read what's going on on that side. Center's doing the same thing. You know, everybody's doing the same thing. Strong guard, strong tackle. And we're just blocking zone. You gotta see it a lot. And, uh, you know, if he's taking that step and he's trying to get to his outside number, is what we tell him, and that guy widens, he's aiming here, you know, he's gonna read the block of the tackle, simple. A weak guard is gonna do the same thing. Then he's gonna come up on that back, the same thing with the nose, or I mean with the center and the, and the strong side guard. Now a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can happen on defense. But we're zone blocking the whole thing. And, you know, if it's a 50 front, and I'm stepping and that guy's doing that, I let him go. I just let him go. I step, he comes inside, I come up on that guy. He comes inside, I'm taking that same step as a guard if I'm uncovered, and it's not that. We did that for a long time. The reason we don't do it anymore is because now automatically my shoulders are turned. You got somebody coming up the football field, you're gonna get your ass knocked off. So we really worked on trying to keep square with our guys up front. So our, our guard in an on-man front, you know, is gonna step here, make sure it's parallel, make sure it's not there. It's here, now if that guy's slanting, you know, I'm going to just hook him or do whatever I have to do to get him blocked, but that's what we tell him. That guy disappears, backer's gone, I'm squared up, I'm going to go ahead and block him. Obviously, the key to this guy is the tackle's blocked, that guy goes inside, regardless of what anybody says, if that guy is slanting, that guard does not have to make a great block. 
he's coming down hard inside, and I step here, he can, I, I might cut him. You know, I like to keep your feet, but I might end up, end up cutting the guy. I hit that thing, obviously I'm gonna break the thing outside. It's the same thing here. I'm the center, he goes with me, I'm gonna block him. They have something like that on, no, they gotta block it. We're not as concerned about the back side on outside zone as we are on inside zone. Because usually it's gonna go outside, uh, outside of the tackle, or when it cuts back, it's gonna be right where the tackle's at. If it's an even man front, You know, again, that guy's the key. That's why you got to split. <coughs> Shit, if he's inside, you better check and throw uncovered or whatever you got to do. Let's get his ass out there playing pass. But if it's an even man front, we don't care. This guy can be lined up way out there. It doesn't make any difference to us. If he's lined up way outside in a nine technique, I'm still going to take that step and I'm going to block it. He's aiming here. You know, automatically, obviously, you're going to see that and, and take it back inside. Our, our, our guard and center in, in, in this kind of a situation, you know, they're going to take care of that. That tackle goes inside, the center's stepping, he's uncovered, he's going to pick him up, the guard's going to come up on the back. But the ball is going to go outside. Again, it's not our best play, but it creates our best play. Because what happens when you get that, when you get that back aiming here, those backers are running. People are running, they're getting their shoulders turned to the sideline, and you're creating problems for them. So we'll go into a football game, that's the first thing that we'll run. Get them running. But our best, our best play is inside zone. Hey, Danny? Yeah. What's your maximum line play? God damn, Tom. How you doing? Right. Like a haircut. <laughs> we vary the line split, split a little bit, but we're, we're about two and a half feet. We've cut them down a little bit. We used to spread them. Now we're about two and a half feet. We see so much blitz and things coming inside that we've cut our split down a little bit. Looking good. Inside zone. I'll talk to you a little bit more about our blocking scheme on this. You know, we're gonna block it the same way. The only difference is the aiming point now is the inside hip of the tackle. But we spend a lot of time, and this is something we went in, we, we've been through cutups, like I said, when you get your ass beat, you look at a lot of cutups. This guy has got to know what's happening up front as far as alignment of people. Because the thing we want to do is make sure, you know, that we're running the thing the right place, whether it's back in here or back all the way, it doesn't make any difference. But he has to know the alignment of, uh, of those people up front. But on the inside zone, the aiming point is the inside hip. Now it's different for our backs. You know, instead of boom, going right to it, what we tell them now is you step, you cross over, you get square, and then you hit the inside hip of the, of the tackle. We feel this. If we can get these guys running with outside zone, then inside zone is going to be a very easy play for us. And we block it the same way. He's going to step, same thing. You know, he, in this particular case, he's going to read the block of the guard now. But he's got to look at it as a, at alignment. You know, if I'm in the back, you know, some of them aren't very smart, but they like to make yardage. So as I line up back here, I'm going to look and see where that guy over that guard's lined up. Where is he? Is he inside shade or outside shade? Or, or, or is he head up? Or what, what is he doing? Because if he's lined up outside in that technique, that thing's probably going to cut back there. I mean, I, you know, that's what I've got to think of mentally as a running back. You know, you talk about all this reading bullshit. You know, have an idea where you're going to run the football. Because you take a great back and have him thinking when he's carrying that football, you know, it takes away his effectiveness. So what we tell them is see what's happening in alignment wise. See what's going on. So if he's outside shade and they're, and they're coming off, you know, he's probably going to cut the thing back inside. Or if that guy's inside shade, you know, and when we talk to him during ga uh, game plan week, if that guy's inside shade, if they're playing a, what we call a three technique and a one technique, 
where he's got that gap, he's got that gap, and he's got that gap, then probably that thing might come all the way back here. But don't expect them to see it. I mean, you don't have that many great backs that can see all that stuff. So sit down, study film, and know what the heck's going to happen. And uh, we talked to him a lot about that. Uh, not, probably not enough. But uh, we're going to take that thing off the weed guard's block, but he's got to be aware of what's happening right here. People are starting to play a lot of eight-man front against us. And I want to emphasize this is that you know, we're getting a lot of whatever there. We're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of eight-man front because what people are saying now in the, in the one back is we're going to take the running game away from them. It used to be, hey, we're going to drop everybody out of there. We're going to play the pass. But what people are saying as you watch us play, if they run the football, they score. If they can't run the football, then they got then they got some problems. So people are starting to play eight-man fronts against us. However, they are. What we try to do on inside zone, anytime there's a stack. You know, something like that, <clears throat> then we are going to come off and double team the heck out of what, whatever's happened. We're going to bring him down inside, we're going to bring him down inside. But we're going to double team any stack. And when I say double team, I mean double team. I mean, don't worry about zone blocking, somebody's going to come up on the back. So anytime there's a stack at all, doesn't make any difference. You know, whether it's there or, and, and you've got something like that. If we're running inside zone to the weak side, we're going to handle that stack. He's going to come off. Those two are going to come off and double team to that backer. Doesn't make any difference. Those two are going to come off and double team to that backer. And when they see that stack, you know, they're still going to step here. But boy, they're going to get up, get together, and double team the heck out of that thing. And again, he's going to hit it, you know, and take it wherever. But if we see this alignment, you know, he's got that gap, probably he's got that gap. So what we want to do is we tell our back, you're going to hit it, we're probably going to take it back, back inside. So it's really important, you know, that that double team goes to that backer and uh, they get off the football and they, and they give him some daylight and, and an opportunity to, 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 to run where they want to run the football. You can't be indecisive. And we have been over the years. You know, we're going to zone block everything. We're a little passive. And now we're just going to come off, double team to that backer. And, and, and uh, you know, he's going to take the ball inside. He sees anything like that, anything like that. Probably when there's a double stack inside, automatically he's probably going to take the thing back inside. And, and he's going to hit it and, and, and see what's going on and, 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 and you know, take it to, to, to wherever it's open. But it's probably going to be back inside. Again, if it's a 50 defense, which, I, like I said earlier, we're starting to see it a little bit more because they can do different things out of it, you know, as far as who they're bringing on pass rush and who they're not bringing. So we're seeing a little bit more of it. If we saw a 50 defense, number one, we'd probably run outside zone. We really feel that's a better play against it. <laughs> but it's the same thing. You know, he's going to come off inside shaded or inside hip of that tackle. The back's got to know what's happening. He sees a normal 50 with this guy outside shade. He's probably going to take it right up in there. Now, if we're seeing a lot of slanting and things like that, then he's got to realize that he may break that thing back inside. And what we've done with them, like I said, it's one, two, I'm square now, and I can take it in any way that I want. And that's a key. Make sure that back on inside zone has his uh, shoulder square as he, as he hits the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> any questions about that? Obviously, Arizona didn't have any goddamn questions. I had no answers. Yes, sir. I was wondering what you were referring to 
ISO. Oh, when, I, when I talked about ISO, I was just isolation play out of the eye. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Which we all run and we all darn good play. As far as his, as far as his action afterwards, yeah. Uh, if we're going to run inside zone, and I'll get into the play action part of it, and it's a real key. If, if we're running inside zone, he comes back, hands the football off, and he fakes bootleg. Okay. If it's outside zone, because he's got a stretch so far, then we just drop him back and fake play action pass. So it's two different things that you see outside and inside zone. And that becomes a real key, uh, as, I, as I'll talk to you about play action pass. You know, we get away from it regardless of what level you're at. They teach it better probably at the lower levels than they do in college. But the key is what's a quarterback do after he hands it off. You know, when I played, I just handed it off, watch what was going on. Because that's the only thing I did all day, was hand it off and watch what was going on. But you've got to make sure you hand it and, and make a fake yes. What do you try to do with your, your running back teaching that square up and be able to see the vision? And, well, and, and be able, or is that recruiting? Not, not really. You know, I, no, I, I really think just getting square is a key. Because what happens a lot of times, they take this step, they cross over, and, th and now they go like this. You, you've got to really teach them the step, you cross over, just, you know, like the eye play. Now get square as I hit that line of square, or as I hit the inside hip of that tackle, to get my shoulders square so that I have vision. There's no way you can have vision of the field going like this. You've got to have vision of the field getting your shoulders square. And we work on that a lot. You know, we have a drill where we'll, you know, we have our center, or whoever the center is, and then we'll, we'll set a dummy there, you know, on a dummy here, dummy there, and just, you know, have them go there or there, you know, okay, now it's there or there. And just so they, so they have sight of what's going on. You know, just so they see it in a situation where it's not a team. And, and that's a starting point for us. So that they're square, they can tell us what's happening up front. Now obviously guys with ability can do it a lot better. But you can take a guy that doesn't have great ability. As long as he stays square, he doesn't have to be a great back. And he can see things, and he stays square, you know, he's going to be held back. The only thing I can see is you might lose some of that acceleration in the line on something. Well, yeah, I mean, it, and, and that's, that's what happens. That's why inside and outside zone are different plays. Outside zone is boom, you're gone, just like beer. And you're going to read that tackle from block because you're either going to go outside him or inside him. <coughs> Inside zone is different. It's just like the eye formation. It's there, there. Now I'm going here. Now I've got to have a feel of what's going on. But I really think this about it. <laughs> What happens to us is you say, okay, this back is our best athlete. But you've got to tell him what's happening up front. You know, he's got to understand who's blocking who. Everybody says, okay, you know, he's going to run for daylight. Well, that's bullshit. But you've got to know who's blocking who and who isn't and, and what kind of scheme you have. Because when that back knows that, you know, he has it in his mind probably where he's going to take the football. 99% of the time, he's right if they know what's happening up front. I'm a firm believer that this guy, the running back, have got to know what's happening up front. Everybody has to know what's happening. When we teach our guys, I bring our quarterbacks in, and uh, like I said, I don't coach them any longer, but what, what I used to do, they knew every blocking assignment of everybody up front, whether it's run, pass, they knew everything. Same thing with that running back. They know everything that's happening up front. They've got to in order for them to be as good as they can be. And uh, obviously, at, at our level, we get to spend more time with them. But, uh, you know, they got to know what's happening. Yes, sir? At what point do you have the quarterback open or reverse? I have them open all the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only time, if we're gonna, we, we have a little belly play where we, you know, bring everybody inside, uh, you know, and, and just kind of wedge everything. And we, that's, that's the only one we reverse on. When we come out, we open because of play action pass and, and bootleg, and it's a lot easier to get them to football. And, and again, you know, if we were running counters and things and trying to fool the backers with how we come out, that would be different. But we want them to know how we're coming out. Because, like I said earlier, outside zone's a key. We open, get those backers running. Same thing on inside zone. 
You know, he's going to come back a little deeper, and the track's a little bit different, but we, we open on all that. Ten to two. God damn. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to go over counter. Uh, what I am going to go over is draw. Uh, because one back draw and the pass off of it is a, is a key. You know, people that run sprint draw, that run sprint draw, the reason they run sprint draw is because of the play action. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you're our formation team and you're going to run the football. You're going to run sprint draw because you want to run play action pass because that's where you're going to get the, get the big play. Same thing with us on draw because we do throw the football a lot, but our play action off of draw and how we block it, which I'll get into in a second, is probably our best football play. But draw, in one back, there's numbers number of different ways to run it. But we want to know, we're always going to run it to our right. Doesn't make any difference if the four minutes, the tight ends to the right or the tight ends to the left. We are always going to have our quarterback open to the right. I used to do it every different, you know, when we ran it the other way, we'd come back, you know, and turn and reverse and hand the thing off. You get much more effectiveness as far as the quarterback's drop and the backers drop by opening it up. And we teach it just one way. Same thing with play action pass off it. So if we're running, we, we would call this 50 draw. You know, he's opening and coming back. What we've got to do here is, uh, you know, we're just going to read his block. And we're going to take care of the backside with the center and the weak guard. Because we are going to run off the strong guard's block. OK? So these two are responsible for the backer and the tackle. And, uh, you know, we used to really be, be big pass setters to let them get up the football field and run draw. We, we do the same thing, but we attack them a little sooner. Penetration has really hurt us. You know, when we used to set, boom, like that, and let them come up the football field, you know, then wheel them one way or the other, a lot of times we got penetration that created a lot of problems for us. So what we tell our guys now, our strong guard in this situation, is I'm going to pass set, now, as soon as you go one way or the other, I'm going to drive block him. I'm going to flat drive block him. I'm going to set. If he comes here, boom, I'm going to go block him. I'm going to set. If he comes inside, boom, I'm going to go block him right now. We're not going to let him come up the football field. As soon as he makes a decision on what he's going to do, then we're going to take, in this particular case, a strong guard, and he's going to block him. Same thing here. Same thing with our tight end. We do not release our tight end and one back. You know, a lot of times a two-back, you can do that. We keep him in so we can take care of different eight-man fronts and so forth. Our center weak guard are going to make a call depending on how the guys are lined up. What we, what we teach them basically to start out with, you know, if that guy's in that gap, they're both going to set on him, okay, and they're, and they're going to double-team him, and then one of them is going to come off on that back depending on what, what happens. Now, as we get into the game and we find out what's happening, if that guy's inside shade of the guard and I'm the center, they're going to make a you know, switch call. So I'm going to set as the center, boom, block him as a weak guard. I'm going to set, boom, come around, of course, the center's block and go block that back. And the back side is the key because you're going to run off him, so they've got to make sure what's happening. You know, if that guy's outside shade, you're in great shape. Now you just set, you block him, you go block him. Now you can run off that guy's block. If this guy's outside shade, that guy's inside shade, you know, then they, they've got to do something because you know the ball's coming back inside. So you've got to make sure that you're doing something with that tackle there to make sure that he's keeping outside. So they'll make a call. Uh, they may switch it. You know, they may sit at it and then, and then go get blocked back. Uh, if, if we're facing a 50 defense, obviously we're going to read the center's block. We're just going to run off from those. 
So it doesn't make any difference what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we're going to set him. They can make a call if that guy happens to be inside shade. You know, he'll set and block him and he'll come up on that backer. Because what's going to happen if that nose goes weak, then you've got to make sure that that thing is solid there. Because you don't want to go off him if he's going weak. Now all of a sudden you've got a slant and you're trying to block him with the tackle and he's coming inside of him and the play's dead. So we may set with the guard, like I, I talked about on the other side, we may set with the guard tackle. He comes inside, he's going to, they're going to both set, he'll block him, he'll come around on the back. Or he'll set, block him, he'll come up on the back, depending on what's happening. You know, they've got to work those games for themselves on that strong side. But we're going to run off the nose. If it's a eagle defense, like so, you know, and hopefully that, that guy is, is sitting out there. <clears throat> now we're going to do the same thing. You know, we're going to set, we're going to set. Normally in that defense, you know, he's going to probably come there, but we're just going to run off the center's block. Normally if that guy's coming here, that guy's going there. So we're going to set, block him, and then those two are responsible for, for those two. And, you know, you just got to spend time, you know, on scheming it and, and blocking it. But you got to make sure they know where the hole is, and then you got to know where you're going to block it on the back side, because that's a key. You know, or the onside, depending on, but anything with the guard and tackle, slatting, you got to make sure that that's taken care of, because if the ball's going there, you got to make sure that that guy can't come inside on you and make a play. And uh, so we spent quite a bit of time. Draw has become a big play for us, uh, much more than anything else, mainly because of the play action pass off. Any questions on, on draw? Yes, sir. Well, that's, that, that's why we keep our tight end involved in it. If it's an eight-man front. <coughs> And every time we see eight-man front, it's you know it's it's uh, obviously uh, it's it's. Uh, <coughs> I got enough guys there. Huh? Okay. God damn it. I thought Arizona had twelve. I have a little trouble sometimes. <laughs> Anytime we see an eight-man front, our center's going weak. Okay, our center's got to go weak against an eight-man front. Now, anything here between those two have got to be taken care of by the tight end and the, and the strong guard. So if we're seeing this front, he's setting, he's setting. Again, those two are going to block those two according to where they're lined up. If the guy's inside shade, they're going to make a, a different call. But usually, regardless of where the guy's at, if he's inside shade, you know, he's going to block him, he's going to block him. If he's outside shade, you know, it doesn't make any difference. But the key is a strong side. And uh, these two guys, you've got to block those two. Or you get all three of them involved sometimes, depending on the alignment. You know, if, if this guy happens to be inside shade, obviously we're not going to get blocked with our tight end. Okay? And in the alignment of the thing, that guy would probably be sitting there because he's, he's going to take that gap. So those three have got to work together. So if we're running draw here, we're going to run it off that strong guard's block regardless because they're going to take care of everything on the weak side, make sure that everything's forced outside. And these three got to take care of those three. So he might set and block him, bring the tight end around. Weak guard in this uh, situation would set, block him down inside. You know, we're running off the strong guard's block. And uh, when you're in one back, that's the only way you can do it. You've got to involve the tight end and block him down. Okay, what I want to talk to you about now is play action pass because I, I really believe now as you watch football all over the country, the big plays come from play action pass. Uh, when I was at Idaho and at Washington State, we'd get trips, run motion, and nobody covered anybody. You run the guy in motion, you take a step, throw the ball, the guy goes 60 yards. 
I was a goddamn hero then. <clears throat> now, when you run a guy in motion, there's somebody there. You know, and they're doing different things to cover. And, and so you've got to, in order to get the big passing play, it's got to come off play action pass. Now, inside zone is real big for us. And we do, and, and we run play action a couple different ways. And I, and I, to me, it's, it's when I ran the deer, which I still think is good offense as there is, nobody runs it, we might go to it. If I went to it in Miami, they'd be about ready to goddamn send me out of town anyway. That would really put me out of town. You gotta pay me a hell of a lot of money, so that's all right, too. <laughs> you know. Who do you control in play action pound? You gotta control somebody involved in the run. Very simple. I mean, who are you gonna, who are you gonna control and what are they doing to you in the running game? So, if we're running, <coughs> if we're running inside zone or outside zone weak, okay, the two guys that you wanna affect are those two. Secondary make, it has nothing to do with it. You know, unless that free safety just busting his ass up there, then you throw the ball deep. But the guys you want to control are these two because they're making the play on run. So what we call it, our play action pass, we just put a three in front of the, in front of the running play. You know, 33 zone uh, to the left is our inside zone play. This particular play we just call 333, very simple. Well, we tell our back now, the aiming point changes. You're going to aim over the outside hip of the guard. We want it a little tighter uh, so we can make a little bit better fake, a little quicker fake. <coughs> you can do whatever you want with this guy. You can run him on a street, come back. It doesn't make any difference. <coughs> those guys aren't the key. You can do whatever you want with that guy. The people we're trying to affect are those two, and we're trying to affect them with those two guys. <coughs> he is responsible for that backer in that particular defense. <clears throat> Our tailback, and I, and I really think the key to all play action pass, obviously, is to make it look like run. And sometimes we forget about that. You've got to emphasize, make it look like run. Make it look like run. What do you do on the running play? And I mean, you've got to spend time and time because they get lazy. And, and, and don't do what they're supposed to because they, 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 they think they've got to get rid of the football. But more than those two are these two. If we're running inside zone or outside zone, our tailback is blocking his outside number. We tell him outside release, break down, block his outside number. That doesn't make any difference where he goes. He can go outside, inside, it doesn't make any difference. But that's what we teach him. So I'll do the same thing when it's play action pass. Now, how many times have you seen play action pass where now this tailback just busting his ass off the football? If that outside backer is coached well, he knows the difference between play action pass and run. Because now that tailback's just flying by him because he knows he's going to get the ball. And he's tired of blocking the guy. He knows he's got a chance, get his name in the paper and all that stuff, so he's in a big hurry. So what we try to teach our tailback, if we're running 333, I, I, I try not to get ahead of myself, but our quarterback is coming back. If we're running it to the left, it's one, two, three, and he ball fakes. We ball fake everything. We don't hand fake anything. We used to do that, and, and Michael Barrow, who's playing for Houston now, uh, was a middle linebacker for us for three years. And we used to do that. We used to come back and you know, put the hand in there and all that stuff. He came up to me after practice one day, he said, Coach, why do you do that? I said, well, you know, freeze the ball, you know, you can get it and throw it. He said, but I can sit back there and I can tell you every time when it's play action pass. All I do is I key through. As soon as I see that hand come out empty, I know it's play action pass. I step up, boom, I get back and make the play. I said, hey, shit, you're pretty smart. 
So what we do now is we come back, we put the football in there. And, and a lot of people do that, but we, we changed and did different ways from listening to different people. But what we do now is we come back, we put that football in there. What we tell our back, you're aiming at the outside hip of the guard. I'm coming in there, I'm giving him a big pocket. And again, it's the same thing. When that ball's in there, boom, I come over the top like I've got it. Don't show anybody that football. Don't show them the goddamn football. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to make that fake. I'm going to stay with it. He's coming over the top. He's hitting in there as hard as I can. So it's going to your left. It's one, two, three, four, five. And I get myself turned. Five-step thing. It's one, two, three, four, five. Boom, I'm getting ready to throw. We try to keep it simple for him. It's one, two. And if those two aren't open, run like a son of a bitch. <laughs> you have no chance. <laughs> when we tell our tail back, you come off, make it look like run, OK? I'm a tail back, and our, all of our guys are in a three-point stance. So I'm going to come off, and I'm going to chop. We tell them to chop. You come off the football, you chop for about two steps. Try to see what he's doing, react to what he's doing, boom, then release in the scene. Just releasing the scene. Nothing different than anything else. But I'm coming off, boom, one, two, I'm chopping. Pew. Now I'm releasing in the seam under control. Because I want to probably get the football in that area somewhere. I don't want to get it up here because, you know, free safety is sitting there. We want to control the backers with play action pass. So once I clear him, I'm going to gear myself down in there. Under control. But we tell our tight end. You're the second receiver. So what you're going to do is you're going to make it look like inside zone, which means you're going to step down inside and block that guy. You're going to step down inside and block him. I'm here. I'm blocking about two counts. And then I am releasing right up in the seam. We try to keep it simple for our quarterback, one, two. So as I'm the quarterback, you know, it's one, two, three. Make the fake, four or five. I'm looking for that tailback first. If that's not there, well, then I keep moving my feet, try to get a little depth, and then I look back to the tight end. Very simple. And I'll tell you what, we don't run it enough. Because if that guy isn't there, and that backer's moving, and that free safety's moving, that guy runs up the seam uncovered many, many times. So you try to keep it as simple for the quarterback as you can. We go one. We go two. If we're going to the right, you know, it's a lot easier, obviously, for a right-handed quarterback. You know, it's one, two, three. Make a good fake. Four, five. I'm looking for the tailback, <coughs> then back to the tight end side. Now, we run it out of all formations. Every single one of those formations, we run it out. If it's trips, It's the same thing. We don't, we don't care what they're doing. We're just going to come off. It's the same thing. He's going to come off, stutter step, in the seam. We run him on a streak. We run him on a comeback in that, in that particular thing. Again, he's stepping. Blocking, you know, you can get that corner moving, doing some different things, and he just releases uh, outside of the hash mark, looking for the football second. We're just telling, okay, you're gonna make that fake comeback, and look for the tailback first. You get those guys moving, that's where you're going. Then again, like I said, you come back to the tight end. Now you can do a lot of things. I mean, you can run streak outside. You can run post with any of those receivers. I mean, you can run the routes that you want to. But the bottom line is, who are you affecting with play action pass and why? And that's why we run those routes, and that's. No, that's what we try to do with 332 and 333. Any questions on that? He's, he ends up about seven yards, usually. You know, it depends on his steps, but I, like I said, it's one, two, three, fake, four, five. He, you know, it's just between six and seven yards. The bottom line, if he's going to throw to the tailback quick, you know, it's going to be one, two, three, fake, boom. He's going to look. If that guy's open, he's going to let it go. 
If he's not open, then he's going to come back and set at about seven yards and come back to the tight end. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm going to get to that next. We're in bootleg and naked. Both of them. Yes, sir. Did you, sir, you got to get bullshit. You see the blitz coming, Dennis. Do you sometimes not check out of it? Just not go with the fake and go ahead and hit the screen? Yeah, if we see blitz, and we don't, let's say we don't see it until it's coming, the quarterback all of a sudden he, he sees it coming and he, he just gets off the fake and tries to dump the ball to the tailback. And, uh, and we see that. We've got some big plays out with people blitzing because obviously we can't block them. Listen. What contact does that uh, tight end make? Pretty good. I mean, he'll sit, get the guy's head up. You know, he's going he's gonna to step here. Boom, he's going to hit it. Because, see, we're going to bring our center back to the back side or guard, depending on what defense it is. They're going to step, and then they're going to come back. So we want to, if they're bringing that outside backer, we want to make sure that he's not coming real fast because we can't get him blocked. So we're going to step, boom, then we're going to bring the un uncovered guy. So we're going to stop him and make him start over and then, then go up for two reasons. For that, plus it gets the backers moving. When he releases, he's got a pretty good opportunity to be over. <clears throat> As far as going side, yeah. No, we don't. We well, could. Our guys aren't smart enough. They're fast enough, but not smart enough. <coughs> no, we no, no, we don't. We just we just come off, and the only thing we do is bring the un uncovered guy in the backside because we're releasing our tight end. Now, other things will turn back. You know, we'll turn back, but that we don't. We try to make it look as much like run up front. Again, in this play, again, you've got to be very aware of what's going on. If that guy's an outside rush guy, you know, if, if, he, if he's head up, he can drive block, you know, and get in his face and, and block him pretty good. You know, we're going to hit it inside here. He's going to pick that guy. He's going to step pick up anything on the back side. You know, they're going to try to drive block it. The, the, the tackle to the side of the call, you know, you'd like him to drive block, but if that guy's outside of him, you know, he has a little problems. If he drive blocks, that guy comes up the football field and misses him. So he's, you know, a little bit more passive on that than he, than he would be if the guy's head up. What we do in our what we do with our bootleg stuff is we will run naked, what we call naked, back to the tight end side. We will run bootleg back to the weak side. Reason for it. Naked to me is the best part play there is. In all play action pass. But back to the tight end side, because you have the tight end sitting here, you're not going to have a real big rush. If we're coming back to the weak side with our quarterback, and that guy's coming up the football field, for him to block him is very, very difficult and give us the same action that you need to have on run. So when we're going to the tight end side, we just call it this. In this particular case, 333 naked. Very simple. Now, because we're moving the quarterback, we tell these guys to get their ass off. All of them. I mean, you drive block him. You sell run as big as you can on Nathan. You don't worry about missing him. You don't even care where he's at. You come off, you sell run. If we're gonna, we, when we run naked back to the tight end side, he's going to hit, again, the outside hip of that guard. Okay. Our quarterback, and to me, this is a real coaching point. And again, I learned this from Michael Barrow. I mean, it's amazing what you learn. I said, Coach, you know, when you guys run the football and, you're, and the quarterback comes, this guy's a bright son of a bitch now, I'm telling you. should hire him. So if he's making too much playing pro football. But when you hand the football off, on, on, on the regular running game, your quarterback always looks back. You know, then he 
and then he fakes movement. He always does it. I can tell. He said, as soon as you hand that football up and I see him looking, I know it's run. I know it's run. So what we've told our quarterbacks, and, and a teaching point for us with our quarterbacks, is do the same thing you do in the run. If you can't beat them, join them. So what we tell our quarterback is this, okay? If we were running naked, back to the tight end side, or any bootleg, you come back, <clears throat> you're making the fake with the ball, he's faking over the football. Now as you come back on boot, you look back at the running back. Look back at the running back. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing what happens. As soon as you come there and you make that fake, and he clears you, and you're here with the football, I look back at that quarterback, or I mean at that running back, and those backers, whew, I mean, they fly. Not only do you have that going, now you got, you're taking advantage of a lazy quarterback. Because he's watching what the hell's going on, and they think that's what it's all about. So we tell our quarterback, naked, I come back, I make the fake, now I look back, I got the football here, and my back's, my back's to the line of scrimmage. I got the football here, I'm looking back. And then I come on the corner, I'm naked. What we tell, what we tell our, our running back is the same thing. You're gonna put the football in there, as soon as you feel that ball being pulled, boom, I'm coming over the top. We tell our tail, our tail back this. You come, instead, we're gonna run him on a drag route. But I don't want him just to run drag. Because if I'm the outside backer, that's not what I do on run. If I'm the outside backer, and I'm sitting there, all of a sudden I see that guy go immediately inside, I know it's not run. And it's pass. So what we tell the tailback is you drive up the football field about three or four yards like you're gonna, like you're gonna block him, and now you run drag. About eight yards deep. I mean, it, it depends on where that backer's at, okay? Our tight end is gonna step down just like he would on inside zone or outside zone and block that outside backer, and he's gotta do a darn good job of it. He's gotta stay with it. He stays with him for about two counts, and then he releases flat. Uh, you can run those guys on whatever you want. Doesn't make a difference, because we're trying to control, like I said earlier, the inside backers. Now, when it's naked, you know, there's nobody to block him but to tie it in, and that's why it's very important, if he's coming, that you stay on him because we are trying to make this look like run. So you gotta be real patient. You sit down, you step down, or if the guy's outside coming, you gotta step outside, block him, stay with him, now release flat. We tell our quarterback again, like I said, make the fake. Now it's one, two. One of those two guys. You get a lot of big plays. It's one, two. If it's trips, You know, it's the same thing. It's there, he steps down inside. What happens, we see a lot of three deep in this defense. Because they're gonna, they're gonna defense the field, of course, the wide side of the football field. You know, or we'll even see six where the free safety's over the top and the corner's playing half, and that guy's got flat responsibility. He does a good job of selling that thing a lot of times you know, if you do a good job of selling it, do a good job of coaching it, that guy's open a lot. And, and we teach it so much that when we look at film sometimes, I get, you know, you, how you teach them one, two, and they come out, that tight end's open, they hit him for about eight yards, and that tailback's coming across, and there's nobody within 20 yards of him, and he can take it to the end zone. And you say, you stupid son of a bitch, why don't you go to the tailback? So, well, because you told me to throw it to him. I said, well, don't listen to me. Throw it to that guy. <laughs> but I mean, you, I mean, you can make a decision on what you want to do, but that's how we go. We go one, two. Question? You just yawning? Tough nine, huh? When you see your quarterback being set, do you have to let him go? Well, he's, he's probably, got, you know, between seven and eight yards. The thing that he's got to do, because we spend so much time with the fake, you know, most quarterbacks on bootleg, when they look over here, and they see that guy sitting out there with snot in his nose, and they know he's coming, you know, it's automatic, like, I'm gonna get rid of it. But because we're keeping him in and we, and we sell it so much, that it's, 
That fake, now after he looks there, he snaps his head around, and it's about seven or eight yards. And it's really, you know, if you had a quarterback that could run, we had two different quarterbacks. We had a kid by the name of Collins. You know, he'd get on that corner. If nothing was there, he could run with it. Uh, the other guys we've had, you know, we're going to throw it, throw it first and throw it second and throw it third because they're not going to run because they're worried about how much money they're going to make in the NFL. So we go one, two, but he's about seven or eight yards deep. Back to the weak side. We run boot. And the, and the reason that we run boot is because of that. You know, whether it's a 50 or whatever, you have a wide end, you do all those things, and in order to get him blocked and naked, you know, he's got to step outside and block him. Well, he doesn't do that on run. You know, he's always stepping inside when, when, when runs away from him. He's trying to cut the guy off. So what we, what we, what we do now is we're going to run boot weak. Now, we'll pull either of those two guys, depending on, on, on who's uncovered. You know, if it's a 50 defense, we'll pull the strong guard. If it's, a, if it's an even defense, we'll pull the center. If it's double eagle, we get the hell out of it. No, when we block down <laughs> with our tackle, we'll take care of it. But <clears throat> so what we do, we run it back, back to the weak side. We just call it 332 boot. You can call whatever you want. 32 to us is that side. We go 332 boot. Same thing here. Same thing with the quarterback. He's responsible for him because we're pulling the center in this particular case. All he's going to do is step down hard to ensure anything that's happening. So what we tell our tackle is you don't worry about that guy. You know, if he's head up, if he's head up or he's outside shade, we're going to hit him like we would try to cut him off and then release down inside. If he's outside, we're not going to concern ourselves. Uh, he's going to make the fake, come back. We're going to pull whoever's uncovered, like I said, to block that <laughs> guy. The key again are those two. Because what we tell our tailback, if we're running inside zone away from him, you know, we're going to try to get him cut off. And the reason we would run boot back to the weak side is because this guy's running like heck and making the play on run. That's the only reason we would run. So that guy is coming inside, we're trying to cut it back or whatever we're trying to do, and now that outside backer is coming in and making the play. Okay? Do the same thing on boot that you do on run. So what we tell our tailback is you come inside to try to cut him off, and, and he comes inside. That guy's probably inside of him anyway. <clears throat> we tell our tailback, Boom, I'm going to come inside like I'm going to cut him off about three steps. You know, one, two, three, get him running, and then I'm just going to release flat at about five or six yards. So our tailback is it's coming hard to cut him off. You've got flow going that way. That's the guy we're trying to control. He's gone. I'm going to come inside. I'm just going to step outside. Like I said, five or six yards, just look for the football. Tight end. Again, the problem that you have, Boot, if they're bringing this guy, you know, you got some problems. Well, we tell our fullback is you're responsible for two guys. You know, that's clinic talk, but that's what we tell them. But what we think happens is our tight end is going to come off and, and drive block him, or come off and hit him. And that's all he's going to do is he's going to come off and hit him as he's releasing into his route. So he's going to come off and hit him, slow him down. You know, he's hitting inside there and tries to get outside if that guy's coming. Tries to get outside if that guy's coming. And he's just running a drag route. Again, it's one, two. Very simple play. But to the weak side, to the weak side, we're going to pull somebody because of the alignment of that guy to, on our weak town. Any questions on that? You do it back to the trip side. <laughs> I mean, there's a zillion things you can do with it. The routes don't make any difference other than those guys are the ones that have got to affect what's going on. Because those are the guys you're going to hit most of the time.
Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about before I get out of here is, is, is play action off of draw. And I don't care what formation you're in, whether you're in the eye or whether you're in split backs or whether you're in the wing tee, it doesn't make any difference. To me, it's the greatest play action pass I've ever seen. We didn't do enough of it. But what it does, it does two things. It really makes the middle backers play, pa or play run, really makes them, and protection becomes a whole heck of a lot easier. And uh, I'll talk to you about it out of doubles. Now this is all turn, pack, turn back protection does. And when I say turn back, we turn back to the weak side. Uh, <coughs> those three are responsible for those three, regardless of what the front is. You know, he's going to set, he's going to turn, you know, depending on, he might set and come back out. But those three are responsible for anybody on the weak side. You know, they can bring, you know, they can bring them all on the weak side and you've got to block. Okay? He is responsible for two people. It's a little easier out of draw than it is out of a, you know, a zone fake. He's going to slide just like he would on draw. And what we teach him on draw is our, you know, our back is just going to slide step. We try to tell him to try to stay down on draw. You know, the worst thing you can do is obviously, because everybody knows that's what you're going to do. So on draw, we tell him to stay down. Boom. On play action pass, we tell him to. We want him all to think it's draw. So he slide steps, he stands up like it's draw, and we only do it to the right. Right now, if we had a left-handed quarterback, I'd have to reevaluate my whole coaching. You know, the spin of the ball and all that shit's a little different. But he just slides. The quarterback is one, two, three, fakes draw, four, five. Five-step draw, seven yards. Ball fake. The other thing we tell this guy is after you make that fake, yell, draw. Yell it. And we had to go to a lot of things to move it last year, so <clears throat> yell, draw. So I'm going to slide step, boom. Draw, draw, draw. But I'm responsible for him and him. Whatever may happen. What we do, we got two routes that we run right now. <clears throat> the guy you're affecting on draw probably, again, are those two guys. So we run what we call 52 and, or 50 and 51 are our draws. We just go 350, 351. Uh, and we, and, and we run the X streak. The X is our split in, which just tells everybody the streak for X dig. So what we do is, again, we make the fake. Our tight end is doing the same thing. It's real important, because when you have guys responsible for two people, you've got to slow that outside rusher down to the strong side. If we're turning the thing weak, we've got to make sure that we slow it down. <clears throat> so our tight end is drive blocking him, slowing him down, just releasing up in the seam. Our tailback is coming off the football. Again, he's doing the same thing. Come in and sell run, and then he releases up the field. We've got four streaks. Four streaks. We go. Now, what we tell these two guys is you're going to go to the hashes. Now, that's a point that we tell them to go to. You're going to go to the hashes. Like any time we run four verticals, whether it's drop back, whether it's uh, play action, we tell them to go to the hashes and let the throw take you off the hashes. So as I make the fake and those backers step up and I see him releasing and the middle of the football field is open, then my throw will take him inside of the hash mark. Make the throw take you inside because if you tell him anything else, you'll have him every place. Uh, at least you, you, know, you can chew him out for something. You know, if they get off the hash, hey, you're supposed to go to the hash, regardless of what happens in this particular formation. And, and what happens if you do a good job, you know, now as they release, as they get up the football field, if they're open, they gear down. You know, don't ever run away from being open. 
Now, so as I release, if I'm the tailback, for example, and I come inside under control, and that guy leaves, and now I'm by him, I don't want to run into the free safety, or if it's too deep, I don't want to run into the other safety. So once I get by him and I'm open, I gear down. We just tell a quarterback, <coughs> this is going to be a little later, because he's blocking, number one, because I hopefully he's slower. So you go boom, there, and all we tell the quarterback on that fifth step, if you see him beat that outside backer, you just lay it over the top. Now don't hold it. You've got to make decisions on what's going to happen. You, you, you've got to know what's going to happen. So as I make that fake and I see him clear that backer, I'm laying it up real quick before anybody in the secondary can be involved. Now, as I make that fake and set, if he isn't open, then I come back to the tight end. If it happens to be a too deep zone situation, you know, obviously you're, you're, you're trying to control the free safety, you know, with, with the streaks up the football field. And you can deal with that as you, you know, as you game plan, that kind of thing. But the fake, getting those back or stepping up are the real key. The other route that we run, and it's probably better against three deep than, than anything else, or even man, it's going to be blocked the same way. We just call it X dig. <coughs> gonna do the same thing. Okay, now what we're doing is is we're, we're taking him and we're running him 18 yards up the football field, just running what we call a dig rod, a square in or whatever you want to call it. Okay? Our tailback. Now stepping, and then he's just running what we call a wheel route outside up the football field, looking for the football over his inside shoulder. Our tight end is setting, and he's coming into that area and trying to control one of those two backers. We're taking him and running him through the free safety on a post. What we're trying to do, number one, is control the backers but now we're throwing this because of secondary people being involved in the run. So when we tell our quarterback on this, as you make the fake and you set, your number one key is the free safety and 3D. And that's when we'll run it. Free safety and 3D, okay? If that guy is stepping up or sitting in there in, any time at all, then we're just gonna try to fill the post over the top. If he's backing out of there, then we go here. To there. That's still five step. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's still five step. You know, but he, as he does it, if it takes some time, we'll go ahead and move him back. I mean, there's no particular depth. It might be nine yards. You just want his feet moving. <coughs> but if he, if he sees this guy going here, well, he's going to take five steps, and that ball's gone. If that guy's backed off, then he's going to drop a little bit more, because now the key becomes those backers. And, and if those backers step up and play the tight end, obviously that dig should be open. For some reason or another, you know, if they're backing up, then you go to the tight end. But I mean, we run that same route off drop back. I mean, it's a hell of a route. The only difference is, when you're making a fake inside, and you're yelling draw, those guys don't get up the football field quite as fast as far as the pass rush is concerned. So you can pass, you can, uh, you can block them a little bit better, plus you control those backers. And, uh, you know, I'm getting to a point now in a drop back passing game. <laughs> you know, when you play Florida State, you know, or some of those guys, or those guys fly their ass up the football field, you've got to find a way to slow them down to get the football off. Because you're not going to sit there and five and seven step drop and give them, you know, every down unless you've got about eight quarterbacks. Because those some bitches are going to get killed. <laughs> so you've got to find a way to control those guys. And even more now than, than ever, then we're involved a heck of a lot more in play action pass. And draw has been big, yes. Well, again, we should be able to pick blitz up. Really, because we're, we're turning everything. Now, if they brought them all, you know, obviously we can't. But if they brought one of these two guys, then our fullback should be able to pick them up. Again, you know, blitz to me creates a lot of problems, and that's why we're one back to try to see it before it happens. And that doesn't happen all the time either. Not at all. You see blitz, then you, you, you got to check out it. 
Any questions about that? We don't have the uh, video. Okay. Well, I'll answer any questions that you guys have about anything. Uh, yes. You have a little kind of tight end that's like four away with the technology. Sure. Darn right. Creates a lot of problems for him. We don't do it enough. I, I, I really think it's good. I think it's even better with two backs and three wide receivers. You'll take the tight end out and you create a lot of problems for him now. Would you show us what you might do if you have four wide receivers against three Let's do this. It's a wide receiver. That's a wide receiver. That's a wide receiver. That's a wide receiver. And that's a wide receiver. That really creates some problems. Only thing is, you know, that damn boy, he's back there by himself. You better protect him. <laughs> now, we put him in a shot guy. You know, we used to run 93 while you guys, you've heard me talk about all that. You know, we get trips and run that guy in motion. We get a motion and then we just line him up out here. And the reason we do it is because of blitz. What would happen to us is we'd run the guy in motion. As soon as they saw motion, they came with some kind of a blitz. Well, when you line him up out there, obviously you can see if it's coming, and you can check and keep the tight end or the tailback in and run your stuff against blitz. So, you know, we do the same thing, 93 Y up, tailback option, Z under, all that stuff, except we just do it from alignment. And, uh, but to answer your question, I got to round it a little bit. You know, if you put a wide receiver in there, you create a lot of problems in the passing game. Let's say you don't have him in the tightest spot. Let's say yeah, I just got him spread out. On the other side of your slot. Over here? No, other side of the slot on the uh, strong side. You mean out here? Yeah. I graduated from Everett High School. It didn't take me long to pick that up. <laughs> How would you send those four out and then spread back like that three deep? I don't know, but I'll think about and call you. I'm not sure. Uh, we've never, I've never done that, but I mean, it creates some problems. When you find out, let me know. Okay? <coughs> Any other questions? Yes? You always send your White House to the neighbor block, but they just always run that off. Oh, no. Well, they're supposed to block. <laughs> no, you know, when it's a running play, they come off and stock, and you know, we spend quite a bit of time doing it. And, yeah, they come off. If it's run, they come off and block. Yeah. You talk about you're going to run the trap. Are you going to still keep the back seven yards deep? Well, I'll probably move him up a little bit. I, you know, I don't really know. Uh, we ran it some this year, and we kept him at the same distance, and it worked out. The thing about the trap that I like, when you get these backers running, you know, again, it's got to be one crossover, but just that angle, you get those guys moving, you know, however you, you know, however you're going to do it, it might create some problems for me. We haven't ran it enough for me to really... <coughs> Tell you, but we're, we are right now. Yeah. Have you entertained thoughts too about the speed options? We got real athletic quarterbacks. Well, we did. We ran it some. We ran it some this year. I, you know, I love speed option out of one back. You know, I went to Miami and put it in my first year when we had Craig Erickson. You know, those guys come out to spring football and should have heard the calling shows. But that some bitch is screwing this thing up, and he's only been here a month. They're running an option, so so we quit running it. But I still think it's a <laughs> Good <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're all welcome to be on the plane going down there. Well, I'll tell you what, them Cubans are asking my ass, I'll promise you that. <laughs> yes? Yeah, actually we do it two ways, draw a trap and that. <coughs> you know, something that we did when I was at Idaho and we got away from, you know, if, if you know, we do a lot of things, and we still do, you know, setting our back over there. Every time we set him there, you know, we were doing something, you know, with our passing game to, for that. You know, we'd run counter back that way and do some different things. So what we did this fall a little bit is we'd set him up, we'd trap it, and we did it off our quick passing game, which is another thing we've talked about, something we're going to do. We would go one, two, you know, bring the football up like that. 
and it would be one, two, the hand that thing to the trap, you know, the quick trap to, to that back, and that's something that, that we're looking at, something we'll, that we'll probably do this spring. What would be your uh, best bet, best formation, the of the two deep zone? Two or three steps. Two or three steps? Yeah. Okay. Number one thing we do in the middle of the field, if they're playing too deep, first thing we do is that. Very simple. Six yard out, drive up the football field at him and break up, take an outside release, run off the football, you know, outside release and just key this guy. We do it against ourselves. We weren't too deep a lot. We just come back, one, two, three. He drives up the football field at that corner, <coughs> is screwing around with that receiver and jamming him and you know trying to release off. And we throw the football right here. Once you start doing that, he starts coming off. He takes an outside release. He just sits in that in that area there, and we throw it to him. One of those two guys. The other thing that we would do against it. <coughs> If we run flat and slant, you know, kind of run it off of him. <clears throat> Those are two things we would do. But the out and in, in, in the, in the streak against too deep creates a lot of problems. And, it, and it's very easy to throw. Any other questions? I'll tell you what, man, it's always nice to be back. And uh, I love this area. And, and, you know, I've been a lot of places. And, and I can say one thing the high school coaches in this state, by far the best I've ever been around and, and, and the programs and the things that you do are really amazing. I want to congratulate you and that's what I miss most about being where I'm at as, as a coach in this state. But thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it.